Deontay Wilder. So good to see you. The matchroom captain <laughs> in the house. You've touched down in Riyadh. We were just saying off camera there, this is your 48th fight week as a professional. Mm. How does it feel to be here in Saudi Arabia? Oh, man, it, it feels good. It feels good to be back, you know. Um, just to be amongst, this, this time it's amongst the sun, you know, more more heat, which I'm more used to, you know, it feels more like home to me. Um, but just to be in the, 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 the culture, just to be amongst the people, you know, and, and the fight experience that's going to be, be there come Saturday, it's, it's, it's good. It's always good when, uh, when I'm on my job. I love, I love what I do. So, you know, they say when you love what you do, it's not working. You were just saying that we were talking about this being your 48 fight week. You said you don't pay too much attention to that. So you probably won't know where you were 12 years ago yesterday. Damn, remember, 12 years ago? 12 years has passed? 12 years ago yesterday. Do you remember what fight that was? 12 years ago. I don't know which, I mean. You, you probably, knocked out Jesse Altman's in 26 seconds okay. in, a ho in a hotel in Mexico. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember that one. I remember that one. <laughs> didn't last yeah. very long. No, it didn't. didn't I, I like those days. I like those times when it don't last long. You know, you, you get paid the same money whether it's one or 12, so you might well make it early. But when you think about it, that's 12 years have passed since that night. What are you still enjoying about this journey? Because I always speak to fighters and they say, it goes so quickly, mm. you blink and, and you've missed it. Yeah. What are you still enjoying about this journey, even though you've been in the sport for, for such a long time now? Uh, enjoying, I, I, you know, I, I, I enjoy, damn, that's a good question, actually, you know, because, you know, this, this business be, can, can become a love and hate kind of business, you know. Um, sometimes you can love the things that's around you, the people, um, you can love the money, you can love, uh, of traveling, but sometimes you can get tired of it as well, you know, so I think it all evened itself out for me, um, you know, I love it all, I, 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 like I just said, I love the people, I love being able to, to support my family, the up, I think that's the most part of it all, I would, I would, you know, I think being able to support my family, being able to do what I love to do as a job, and go back home and be able to, you know, provide for my family, provide for my children most of all, giving them the best of education and the best of the world has to offer. I think that's the most, most joy, you know, joy that I love, being able to build generation wealth and follow through. What age are your children now, Deontay? How old are they? Uh, they range from six to 19. Six I had to a, 19? Yeah, my daughter just graduated from, um, from um, high school. She's uh, my oldest. She's the one, the reason why I'm in, involved into boxing. So now she's, uh, she's growing all up, you know, is, is uh, I wouldn't say hard to believe, but it's like, uh, it's an excitement feeling when I think about it, to know where, how, where she come from and where she are now and where she about to go. It's just a beautiful feeling, you know, just being a father, uh, which I love being a father, you know, that's one of the most precious gifts in the world to be someone's father. And um, just to see her, where all the odds was against her. You know, you're looking at a child that doctors said she would never walk or never have a natural childhood ability or learning. And here she is graduating from high school, you know. So it's a beautiful feeling, you know. It keeps me alive. What was, uh, what was her role in you in boxing? Like you just said there, she played an important role in, in why you're here and, and why you started boxing. How yeah, because that? she was born with spina bifida. You know, where I come from is we're, we're big in American football, basketball. And that was my goals. That's what I was in going to college for, to, to be a professional football or basketball player. And when she came along at 19 years old, but that, I, uh, that I had a child that was on the way that was gonna be born with spina bifida. So, you know, when you have a child that has a special needs, it changes your life. It changes everything about you, you know. And, um, Without her, I wouldn't have been, I definitely wouldn't have been a fighter, you know, especially not coming from the, the city and the state that I'm from, because, we, you know, you don't see those things back where I'm from, you know. And um, if it wasn't for her, having her, being able to come up with ideas of how can I make money, how can I still be a professional athlete while making the money and hear a box and come along, hey, you don't have to go to school for that unless you're at the school of hard knocks. And I'm all about that, you know? <laughs> and so joining a gym, which I never thought it would be a gym where I'm from. We don't, we don't see things like that. And just walking in and feeling like I'm at the right place at the right time, you know? And the rest is history. 
does she want to go to college now? Oh yeah, most definitely. Most and how, definitely. how proud does that make you that you're, you're able to, to help give her those opportunities too? I mean, you see me smiling, right? <laughs> so it's, it's a beautiful feeling, you know, um, just to see her grow, growing up, you know, into womanhood. And um, I'm just uh, anxious and I'm excited to see what choices she makes on her own now. You know, she's been under my supervision and her mother's and um, now, you know, when your child grows up and go into college, it's like now they got to make their own decisions. And I've given her the tools uh, to life to succeed. Now she just has to use them. And I always tell my children, I'm going to give you the tools of life to succeed, but you're going to also gather other tools to put in your toolbox. And you have to, you know, you, when different situations come about, you're not, you have to know how to use them. You have to make wise decisions. You know, in life, we can make life hard or we can make it easy for ourselves. No matter how we grow up, you know, it's all about decision making. And if you make the right decisions, then things will come good for you. You make the wrong decisions, then hey, it's self-explanatory. And you say the youngest is six. Correct. How aware, is, is that a boy or a girl, your youngest, sorry? A girl. A girl. How aware is your youngest daughter of what daddy is? Does she know you just as dad or the bronze bomber? How aware is she of what you all do All of work? it, all of the above. You know, they've been, they've been born into it. You know, my oldest is the only one that wasn't born into me fighting, you know. Um, but all of my other children, they've been born into to their dad being a fighter and they know very well what's going on, you know. At one point in time, uh, as they was younger, they didn't, you know, they, you know, as children, they do as children does. They go play and not really have knowledge of, of, of what daddy is or whatever. They just know daddy, you know, is there to provide and stuff like that until they got a little bit older. My son was like, dad, he, did, he was telling his mother, my dad's famous. He didn't realize it until he started getting on the internet and started seeing things and stuff like that. But, um, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't draw them away from who I am, I'm still dad at the end of the day, you know what I mean? And that's how they look at me. They look at me, one of my sons called me a superhero. You know, when he was younger, he said, dad is a superhero, he's my superhero, you know? And um, I'm a very emotional man, but when it comes to my children, I have no problem showing those emotions at all. Sometimes I will grab a corner, and I will grab a corner in one of the rooms as I see them playing amongst each other, and I will share tears because my plan is going as planned it. You know, many times throughout my life, plan hasn't gone as planned. You know, majority of the time of my life, but to 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 uh, to set plan and to see things are following through, it just it, it makes me so happy. So it's tears of joy that I always share to see my children because I always tell them you have to provide for each other, protect each other, be there for each other. Because if you don't, then no one else will. You guys already have your best friends right now. Because as you grow up in the world, you're going to see that people that you call friends, they're going to drop as you get older. Because you start getting smarter, you start getting more knowledgeable about things, and you, and you, 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 you start noticing certain things, you know? And, you know. and to see them all together, to know that they got each other, that they don't need anyone. anyone. I say if you get outsiders coming in, then they're lucky to have you. You're not lucky to have them because y'all going to have each other. And to see them together, to get along with each other and provide with each other, it's a beautiful feeling. Well, let's go from Daddy Deontay to the Bronze Bomber. No! <laughs> to Bronze Bomber. Let's talk about this because you, you said, like, heading into the Parker fight, that you, know, you were at peace with yourself and a few things had changed. You'd done some soul searching. But sitting here now, you seem in a, in a terrific place. Mm. But in what way do you feel like the Bronze Bomber again? Ah, uh, man, just, yeah, I've always. My, my, the love for it, the, the fire has, had went out for me, you know, for, for several reasons, you know. Uh, and um, I looked to seek peace more back then, you know. I, I did a lot of things to, to soul search, to seek more peace because I was content, I was happy with life, you know. I was financially stable, I didn't really need too much. I didn't really need this business like I don't need it now, but you know. and. It was a proud moment to say that I've made it, especially from where I came from, you know, and, and to see my children. I have, I have seven children and, and to see them all well off and, and I made it, you know, and uh, my peace was there, you know. And it's a, it, it just, it's, 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 it's kind of, it's kind of crazy when, when you get into business 
And you know, cause I always tell people, being in this, in this business, it's a life and death business. You know, a lot of stuff be dressed up when, when it comes to boxing. This is a brutal sport. There's nothing nice about it at all. When you step inside that ring, you're risking your life for others' entertainment, and that's solely, that's it. Over 13 fighter dies a year, but that's not mentioned. You know, it's a cover-up. It's like, you know, make it seem like it's so safe and all this, but it really is not. We've seen it many years. And for me, I always like to tell people, if I'm involved in this business, I'm gonna tell you how I feel because I have that right to, and I'm risking my life, so I'm gonna speak how I wanna speak. Now it's up to the person that's, that's listening to take in what I'm saying. Most of the time when I say things, people try to take the certain parts out and add whatever they want and try to make me seem like a villain, try to make me seem like I'm bad, or he's talking about killing and all that, but look, look where I'm at, look what I'm doing. I can die. It's just plain and simple. And if you're afraid of death, then don't listen, get out of here. But at the end of the day, people are just as guilty as I when I say certain things because you pay to watch it. You pay to watch me do what I say I want to do, you know? But then on the other end, I say, all right, cool. I'm going I'm to I'm put that on ice. I'm going to find peace. And I found peace. But nobody want to accept my peace. They want the old Wilder bag. They want the, the, the crazy Wilder. They, they want him. I'm like, it's damn if you do, damn if you don't. So here I am working with the Saudis, and they want the crazy Wilder. They like that Wilder. And I like someone that likes for me to be who I am and not those stones at me, criticize me, oh, he's this and this, but you want that man. Because when you see a peaceful world in the ring, he's not, just, he's not that exciting, is he? <laughs> he's not that exciting as the, as the one. So, you know, to, to, to be around a culture of people that love to see that aggressiveness of me, to love to see me talk so strongly about certain things, it relits, it relights. It re, it re, it, it re, it re, it re, you know, you know. my flame it's has been relit. Yeah. It's back. Yeah, you know, it, it feels good to, to do so. And they, and they paying the bills, so, you know, ain't nobody else paying the bills. And um, it just makes me more excited, more hungry um, to do what I got to do and to uh, get back to the titles, you know. What does Zhili Zhang need to be ready for then? What, what Deontay Wilder is going to hit him from the opening bell? I mean, I'm coming from, I'm coming with everything, you know, I'm not holding back at this moment in time, you know, so uh, unfortunately, you know, he, he catches a wilder that's, that I say I'm back, I feel like it, but June the 1st is going to be the revealing of it, and everyone that's watching is going to be the witness to see if he's truly back, you know, and um, at this moment in time, you know, I really don't have nothing to lose, you know. Life is good for me, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm still involved in this business. I, I got goals that I want to still accomplish and I got things that I still want to do. So it's going to be a great fight. I, I love being able to uh, have a matchup against uh, Big Bang Zang. I love that name, though. I, just, I love <laughs> Big Bang Zang. I love, that's a great name. Alabama power versus Chinese power. Yeah, that's, that's a beautiful thing. And um, that's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be two powerhouses in there trying to knock each other out. This is not a fight I don't think is going to go to rounds. Somebody's going to get knocked out. And that's what I love to be involved in. I love to be involved in fights that's, 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 that's risky, that if anybody get touched, you can go, you know, because at the end of the day, nobody want to see a 12 round fight when it comes with the heavyweights. They come to see the big boys and when they come to see the big boys, they want to see somebody get knocked out, plain and simple. And for me, I like, not only I like to knock you out, but I want your body to do something crazy while it's on the canvas. You know, that's my excitement. I want to see you. I don't just want to see you just get sparked out. I want to see your body go into seizure. I want to see your tongue in the back of your mouth. I want to see your eyes roll back in your head like you're having great sex. So here I am, you know. So it's, it's going to be a, a, an interesting fight while it lasts. And you carry the, the honor of the captain's armband. Yeah, man. Eddie, Eddie Hearn thinks it's going to be level, and then you're going to secure the win by mm. knockout. Do you, do you like that pressure, being the captain leading your team into battle? Oh, uh, most definitely. You know, I've had pressure on my back ever since I was born. I've been a, I've been a natural born leader. 
you know, I've always had to lead people ever since I was young. And so this is, it's a, it's a, it's a pleasure to be the captain and uh, it's a responsibility that I'm so familiar with. It's, it, you know, and I say no pressure, but I like the pressure. I like the pressure, but it's no pressure. I don't want to contradict myself, but if you understand what I'm saying, my favorite thing is uh, what's understood don't have to be explained. I, I sense the feeling you're a very dangerous man right now. Mm. I get that feeling. Mm. And I'm team Matrim, so I'm, I'm over the moon about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited. Blessed, blessed. Uh, Deontay, a pleasure to speak to you as always. Our captain, our skipper, wish you the best of luck on Saturday night. Thank you so much.